Hi, my name is Cody Hosterman, and I'm the Technical Director here at Pure Storage for VMware Solutions. What I'm going to be showing you today is the new features of the FlashArray plugin for the vSphere web client, version 3. So let's poke around and see what's new. So currently I'm logged into my vCenter environment. You can see it's set up in linked mode, so I have two vCenters, vCenter 1 and vCenter 2. Furthermore, if we go to the home screen, we can see that the Pure Storage plugin is not installed. You'd normally see a little Pure icon right there next to Site Recovery Manager. So I'm going to log out of the plugin and then go into my Flash Array GUI. This is where you can actually install the, the vSphere Web Client plugin for the Flash Array. So using this, I'll enter in my uh, FQDN. You can use your IP if you want to as well. Administrative credentials. Using, using this tool, uh, you can install it, uninstall it, or of course upgrade it. In this instance, we're going to connect to my vCenter, and it's going to query your vCenter to see if the plugin is currently installed. When the process is complete, we can see that there's no plugin installed in the vCenter, and I have version 3 available on this array. So I'm going to go ahead and install it. So this is going to install it into the vCenter 1 uh, vCenter in my environment. This will register the extension inside of vCenter, and the next time you log in, it'll be available inside of the vSphere web client. Now that it's installed, we'll go ahead and actually install it in vCenter 2 as well. This allows me, if I log into either one of the vCenters directly, I can use the plugin. So I'll change the uh, FQDN save it, and run the installer again on my other vCenter. As you can see, it's not installed, so we'll go ahead and install it. This will put version 3 on both of my vCenters. Now, I can manage the flash array from either one. I can log into either vCenter. It doesn't really matter, but it's important to install into both so you have the option. The installation is just about complete, and we'll move back over to vCenter to continue managing the flash array from within the web client. So the process is done, so let's flip back over and log into vCenter. So the first time you log in, it's going to download the plugin files from the Flash Array, and it's going to install it into the interface. So the first step we'll want to do is actually add the Flash Arrays and authenticate the management inside of the plugin. So here's a little new feature we added. When you click on the home screen in the actual uh, vSphere environment, you'll see a new pure storage icon on the very bottom. This will take you directly to the configuration screen of the Flash Array plugin. So the first step here is to add one or more flash arrays. You can add as many as you want. It doesn't necessarily even have to be the one that you installed it from. So authenticate one or more flash arrays. Optionally, if you want to, you can also enable role-based access control of that flash array. So if you only want certain users to do certain things, you can do that. So now I'm adding my flash array. And this allows me to start managing and provisioning that flash array inside of the plugin. So let's start configuring my vCenter environment. So I have a software iSCSI adapter here, and you see I have no iSCSI targets. And so the first thing I want to do before I provision my storage is I need to cons configure iSCSI on both of these hosts in this cluster. And that involves adding the iSCSI targets. So if I look at my flash array, we see that I also don't have any host groups configured. This is the object that you actually provision volumes to to present it to that host inside of the flash array. So let's do this with a plugin. So I can go and do add host group. And this will automatically take in all the information from my VMware environment and configure my host and host group on the flash array. Furthermore, there's a new option here to configure iSCSI initiators. Those will add the flash array targets as iSCSI targets on those hosts. Easy as that. The flash array host group is created, the hosts, their IQNs added, and you can see now the targets have been added to my software iSCSI adapter as well. All four of my iSCSI ports on my flash array are entered into both of those hosts. Furthermore, the plugin also automates the best practices, setting login timeout to 30 seconds and delayed act to disabled, which we generally recommend. This is configured on both hosts. This really saves you a lot of time, especially at scale, if you have a lot of hosts in your cluster. Both of these are now properly configured and ready to provision to. So the next step is we can verify on the flash array that the host group's been created. We can see that I have my mission host group and the hosts inside of it with their iSCSI initiators added to those individual hosts. My IQN right there for that host as well as the other. I don't have any volumes created, so that's the next step. We want to start provisioning storage. We can also use the plugin to do that as well. So go to Pure Storage and create data store. You'll see some new options in this wizard. VMFS and VVOL, so you can mount storage containers for VVOLs, which you can see in a different demo later. Also, we now support VMFS 6 that was introduced in vSphere 6.5, which we generally recommend. So you can now provision VMFS 6 data stores as well as 5 using our plugin. 
choose your array, your host, and optionally a protection policy you want to assign to that individual uh, data store. So this will create the volume on the flash array, connect it to that host group we created earlier. It will now be seen by that iSCSI adapter that we configure the targets with automatically, and it will format it with VMFS 6, so you can start provisioning virtual machines to it. So we can see my VMFS data store has been created and provisioned to that host group. The next step is we can see the underlying information of the data store with the plugin. We can create snapshots, we can resize it, we can of course even delete it with the plugin. The full management tasks of the flash array data stores are available in the plugin. So here's the back end information of this data store saying what flash array it's on, what underlying volume it is, and you can also see some basic performance information, throughput, IOPS, latency, bandwidth, and of course the data reduction of that volume. There's no data on it, so there's nothing really to reduce yet. Currently this is attached to four ho two hosts. But maybe I want to add it to my other two hosts in my other cluster. Previously, we couldn't do that without going to the array GUI and manually uh, adding that volume to that host group. But with a plugin, we can now do that. So if I want to provision storage to this host group, I need to first do the one-off configuration of creating a host group so I can actually provision objects to it on the flash array. So I'll go to my cluster and do create host group. And I'm also going to do iSCSI, but let's say I deselect that configure iSCSI initiators. And so all this is going to do is create the host group. So on the flash array, we'll see my host group and my hosts are created. And so I can provision volumes to it. But I do need to have those iSCSI initiators configured on my uh, ESX server, which I forgot to do or accidentally deselected. We have a new option here for configure iSCSI. So you can choose your flash array or all flash arrays you have registered. And this will then independently also configure their iSCSI adapters. So if you already have the host group created, um, or you forgot to do it, or you want to use iSCSI now, you can do that without having to run through the host group creation wizard as well. So here's another feature. I want to add this to a different cluster. So I can right click on that data store and do amount on additional hosts. This is then going to present it to any other cluster I choose in that VMware environment. I want to add it to my union cluster, which has ESX 5 and 6 inside of it. So I can then provision VMs to that data store on that cluster as well. What this is going to do, it's going to map the host group that belongs to that, that cluster. It's going to connect it and then rescan it. And now we see it's connected to all four of my data stores in vCenter. So this really opens up what you can do. And generally, you never have to go to the flash array to really do anything when it comes to provisioning VMware storage and managing it. Right, there's a variety of other options. Space reclamation, delete data store. Here I can also create a snapshot. So I'll create a quick flash array snapshot of this data store. And so I can protect it from any changes that might occur. You can see my snapshot is listed, and I have a variety of, of features inside of here that I can leverage that snapshot with. Create a new data store, restore from it. So I'm going to create a new data store from this snapshot. I'll choose the host I want to provision it to. Optionally, I can also add it to protection policy. It's going to take that snapshot, create a new volume, resignature it, and present it to that host or cluster that I chose. In this case, I'm just provisioning it to my ESX01 host. And this allow me to run dev test, copy, restore from that data store. So the last step is maybe I'm done with this data store. I've ran my dev test against it. I don't need it anymore. I can get rid of it. So I can also use the plugin to actually delete that data store and get rid of it. When you delete a data store on the flash array, you have 24 hours uh, to recover it. So if you accidentally delete a volume for some reason or a snapshot or a protection group or a protection group snapshot, will protect it for 24 hours automatically. So I can go to Pure Storage, Destroy Data Store, and then destroy it. I said that will remove it from the VMware environment, but it gives you 24 hours to protect it and recover from on the flash array. So these are a lot of the new features of the version 3 of the vSphere Web Client plugin for the flash array. There's also a lot of new stuff around virtual volumes uh, that you can check out in another video we filmed earlier. Thanks for your time, and look forward to customers using it.